My earliest memory is the night I was born, at home, on New Year's Eve. Three midwives arrived in ball gowns and evening gloves and fought for the right to deliver a New Year's baby. The winner unwrapped the umbilical cord from round my neck, and when I could cry, it woke my big brother Sam, who stroked my head until I slept. He watched for hours, which for a four-year-old is like days. He watched over me all night, until the birds called the dawning. Of course, I know none of that can really be my memory. I was only hours old. I see it all from an outside perspective. So it's really other people's memories and stories I've collected, but it doesn't feel any different from any other memory. And you can produce a lot of truth with a mistold story. In my latest big memory, I'm 23. It's two months ago. Four young men in dark suits, shoulder to shoulder, packed like sardines in the living room mirror. Tom, 16, Jake, 18, He's shuffling the knot of his tie. Ben is 20. I can't fix the lump at my throat either, but we look ready. Watching us, our three-year-old niece, Aisha, Sam's daughter. She'll tell you she's three and three quarters. She sat on a stool, swinging her tiny legs. She holds a black dress like a strangled silhouette. I tell her to put it on, and she refuses. She lives in that octopus jumper. Mum? Mum? Her still life hands are beached on bare legs. Mum, please, it's nearly time. She doesn't react. After all, these things happen to other people. She stares at a photo of Sam propped on the bedside table. He's holding up a bucket and an oversized spade, poking his tongue through the gap in his grin. Tom shouts up. The car's here, we've got to go. I try to wrestle Mum's feet into her tights and I ladder them. The car's too small. We won't all fit, and there's no time for a cab. Tom says he'll go in the boot, or sit on Ben's lap. Mum's trying to go back inside, behind closed curtains, as though shutting it out and trying to hide might reverse things, as though she gets to choose when we leave. Tom goes in front. Ben and Jake flank Mum like bodyguards. Aisha sits on Anand's lap and looks through the back window at me. Jacket flapping, tie fastened to the handlebars of Sam's old bike. Aisha looks me straight in the eye and sticks her tongue out. You can be deaf to fridge hum till it breaks and you're hit with the silence. Like how Aisha usually talks and talks, so I can hear how quiet she has been since I picked her up. And Poppy asked if I was her daddy. Aisha said, no, we burn my daddy up into ashes. To ashes. But she's four today. She tells me she's in charge of what we play later. Informs me her bedtime is midnight, because it's her birthday. It's my birthday. I catch her eye in the rear view mirror, and she turns away to engage a truck driver in a one-way staring contest. I was the same at her age. I hated bedtime. Clock watching's horrible, you can't play to a deadline. So age five, I tried to rewind time by turning clocks backwards. To pit stop the tick-tock, I take out all the batteries. But it doesn't work, and I can't sleep. When Sam goes to bed, he tells me to count sheep. But I can't tell the difference between this one and the next. How do I know it's not the same sheep going round for another turn? Sam says forget sheep then, just count. What's the biggest number I know? I say a hundred. No, a thousand. He counters with a million. I say a billion, squillion, gazillion, but I'm five. He knows my limits because he's nine. And he says like it's a secret, infinity. I say infinity plus one. He says that's the same thing. Because infinity means you just keep counting forever. He doesn't know yet. He'll never get past 27. And neither do I as I stare into the darkness, my eyes wide, mind fizzing like a sparkler. Infinity is so big, you can't even get close. Infinity can make it seem as if we count for nothing. Happy birthday.
Aisha's cake is iced with four penguins, frozen stiff in the frosting. Tom asks her which piece she wants, and she eats two, hers and mum's. Mum's gaze doesn't move from the twisted smoke plumes, still whispered by candles. The Big Bang was 14 billion years ago. Seems like infinity. So we can't imagine the universe being 100 trillion years old, but by then, every star will have collapsed. No life will be possible. The universe will be blackness for a further million trillion, trillion trillion, trillion trillion, trillion trillion years. In fact, if the universe were a song on a record the size of Jupiter, all of the sound would have happened before the needle even moved. And yet, here we are, in that first noisy moment. Every single atom forged in stars and supernovas. From the sodium in our nerves to the calcium in our bones, we are thinking, feeling patterns of atoms, watching ourselves happening. Five, six, seven. The first time we played hide and seek, Aisha just covered her eyes. Now, she sets decoys before she hides. Last time, it was Teddy's under a duvet. When you're looking for someone, it's easy to trick yourself. 15, 16, 17. Keep counting. Aisha, I thought you were hiding. I said keep counting. OK. 25, 26, 27. 28. I find Mum in the garden, tearing up old boxes. Me and Tom fetch wood from the shed, treading softly, trying not to break the spell. We fetch chairs and the others join us. Aisha comes last. I ask her where she hid, and she scowls and turns her back, and then hugs Mum's legs. I was thinking about Sam's rabbit earlier. The massive one with the floppy ears. What was it called? Flopper. <laughs> yeah. About when Sam found it dead in its hutch and went and told Mum his rabbit was broken. Our Mum had to calm him down and told him they'd bury it in the garden. It'd become part of the soil and the nutrients would feed the plants. Typical gardener. And then Dad dug the hole too small and the rabbit wouldn't fit. And Sam pointed at the spade and said, Chop, Chop him, him in half, half Daddy. He's, He's dead. dead. <laughs> Sam wanted to feed it to the fox. Your dad said he'd just dig the hole bigger, but Sam wanted to leave Floppy out. But you did bury him, right? Yeah, of course we buried it. We didn't want bits of rabbit strewn across the garden. We stare into the flames, trying to follow the shifting patterns. But then, when it was bedtime, Sam wasn't in his room. Sam! 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 Oh, what on earth are you doing, you silly boy? You are so through. Look at this mud. He'd been digging with his bare hands. Luckily, he hadn't gotten as far as the rabbit. I carried him in for a bath. He said we had to leave Floppy where the fox would find him. He said if we didn't, the fox might eat up someone else's rabbit. Someone's alive, rabbit. The fire edges us closer together. The stories pushing towards morning. We press our hands to the tongues of flame that lick themselves to ash. Aisha is kicking her tiny legs. The cold is at our backs. The heat still soaked into one side of our cooling bodies. And the warmth will last longest if we huddle close and share it. <laughs> 